K Nation. Sponsored by K-State Superstore and 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Tonight on K-Nation, we get an exclusive with one of the most popular guys at K-State right now, assistant coach Dream Dowling. He joins us for an exclusive on behind the scenes of K-State basketball. And one of our favorite guests here on K-Nation, <laughs> Sharia's Lada, joins to talk what went wrong for Kansas against Arkansas. He's a writer with KC Star that has been following the Jayhawks all season long. And we have a ton of basketball to break down. K-State in North Carolina, KU in Des Moines, and women's basketball teams are popping off in the postseason, and you'll have to see that for sure. Welcome to K Nation. I'm Lainey Gerber. And I'm Jacob Coffin. Glenn is in Greensboro covering K State hoops, and we'll get to all that and much more. But, Lainey, a mixed bag of emotions on the K Nation set today. Still riding wow. the high of that K State win over Kentucky, but still in the low of KU's unfortunate ending to a successful season. Yeah, all this back and forth is kind of making my stomach sick, but we'll try to keep a happy mood. So we start with the positives out in Greenboro, North Carolina. Reminder that due to NCAA rules, we cannot be showing the TV highlights from the games, but if you did watch the game, you know win or lose. It was a great one. Physical from the start with Kentucky's reigning player of the year, Oscar Shibwe, just cleaning up on the glass. K-State goes 0 for 14 from 3 to start the game, but finishes hitting the last, seven, the last 5 of 7 beyond the arc. It was close the entire way as well. Neither team led by more than 8 points, but it was just clutch shooting down the stretch that made the win possible. Clutch shots from Marquise Noel and Ish Masood, the two guys on the roster that stuck around when Tang got to town. I thought that we could be an NCAA tournament team. That, that was my goal. I, Keith and I went out to lunch one day and I, you know, I just told him, I said, Keith, I'm going to do everything in my power uh, to put a team together that will get him a chance to get to the NCAA tournament. And he told me, he said, Coach, I don't care if we have five dudes, right? We're going to the tournament because Kimball Walker won a national championship with, I think it was like three freshmen and two sophomores, whatever it was. But he knew, right? And I was like, man, with that kind of confidence, I got, we, it just made, inspired me to work harder and our staff to work harder. And so uh, he always believed it and he helped me believe. Inspiring stuff from Tang there inherits two players that install that crazy faith back to him. Now that team is headed to the Sweet 16. Marquise Noel was a phenomenal in this one. 27 points and nine assists and went 10 for 11 from the free throw line when it mattered. I mean, I was just in attack mode second half uh, because I seen how they were playing me. They were playing me for the pass uh, because I dropped a lot of dimes in the first half. So. I just figured that, you know, I try to look for my own shot um, a little bit more and be more aggressive. And I wanted to go to New York, so. <laughs> yeah, you can't knock a guy who wants to go back to his hometown. In New York, they will go to check out these celebration shots in the locker room after the game. 16 is oh so sweet. It's such a sweet moment with Tang and Noel embracing and a nice sweaty hug. <laughs> From pick to last in the Big 12 to heading to the Sweet 16. It's an incredible run that's not even over yet. And K-State gets another state that's the Spartans of Michigan State next. And KU isn't having as great of a weekend. The Jayhawks will not make the trip to Vegas for the Sweet 16. Their season ended yesterday against Arkansas. A lot impacted this game. Obviously, not having Bill Self affects the team. It's hard to tell how much his absence changed things, but the team says Norm Roberts is a great coach and Self prepared them well for this game. Fouls had a big impact. KU had to deal without KJ Adams and Ernest Uday for chunks of the game because they picked up quick fouls. Even with those fouls in the first half, it looked like it would be another game where KU holds onto a small lead until the final buzzer. But in the second half, Arkansas went on 11 to nothing run that tied the game, eventually taking the lead. Arkansas is so big, KU couldn't rebound the ball. Ultimately, this game was decided by one point and any one play could have changed the outcome. You know, when you kind of talk about those little things, you know, maybe we could have changed, you know, us personally and that could have made a, you know, different outcome. But at the same time, you know, it's hard to tell because, you know, you got athletic, athletic guys up there. And that's why teams just don't repeat championships in basketball as often as some other sports. Even after such a heartbreaking loss, though, this team had nothing but good things to say about each other and about the season. And most impressively, I thought, is they still had good things to say about themselves. No one talked down on themselves or took this loss personally. They just couldn't help but to be thankful for this experience. Put on a jersey has, has changed my life forever. And uh, 
it's just been a blessing to be here. It's been a blessing to have the opportunity to, to wear this jersey and play and, and compete. And I just want to be remembered as a guy that, that competed and, uh, and loved this place because I, I truly do. In the dagger in this game, Arkansas had 15 second chance points to KU's two. Jake, when you hear that, does your stomach turn like mine does? It's not an ideal way to finish out a game, especially uh, coming from a KU fan. So yeah, 15 to two right there, that, that's not gonna win you a ball game. Yeah, but this team gave us such a great season and being able to cover them on this show and spend so much time with those guys. They love that school, mm -hmm. they love that team. We love that school and that team, so it sucks to see their season end early. But. And it's KU basketball, though, so you can so, almost bet on that they'll be there again yeah, next year. KU fans are definitely spoiled in that regard. Can't <laughs> wait. Well, don't go anywhere, folks. We're just getting started. Coming up later on K Nation, Doling Bump. That's right. Dream Dowling will be on the show to give us an exclusive look at K-State men's basketball. But first, the madness of March isn't all about the guys. We've had some fun women's teams all year long, and they're still playing. That's up next. Come out to the biggest party in the heartland, the Country Stampede. Headliners include Hardy, Lee Rice, and Cody Johnson. July 13th through 15th. Tickets and camping on sale now at CountrySTampede.com. Welcome to Jungle House, a shop for plant people. The Jungle House offers a range of in-store and at-home services to help your plants thrive. Not a green thumb? Don't sweat it. We're here to help. Jungle House, 924 Delaware Street, Lawrence. Can you insure our lemonade stand? Would you still insure our lemonade stands? Mmm, yes. For auto, home, business, farm, and life insurance, give our offices a call today. We appreciate your business. Fidelity Bank is celebrating 100 years, empowering customers since 1922. Many of our small business customers are experts at what they do, but there's simply not enough hours in the day for them to be experts in all the financial services that are available to them. We can be that for them, and that's how we do business right here at home. Fidelity Bank, we do business right here at home. Golden Corral on Southwest Wanamaker Road has been locally owned since 1999. Come join us in our newly remodeled dining room with updated decor, a stone fireplace, and an enhanced buffet area. Breakfast served Saturdays and Sundays. Pickup orders and catering available. Golden Corral in Topeka is looking for great service-minded people to fill positions with advancement opportunities. Serious applicants can walk in to complete an application. Come on in and join us at Golden Corral. Come out to the biggest party in the heartland, the Country Stampede. Headliners include Hardy, Lee Rice, and Cody Johnson. July 13th through 15th. Tickets and camping on sale now at CountrySTampede.com. Welcome back to K Nation. Now, the madness of March isn't strictly for the men's tournament. There are plenty of women's basketball moments cemented in history this month. That's right. Pat Summit's Tennessee Volunteers, all those UConn records, and the Mississippi State buzzer beater to knock off the Huskies in the Final Four. Just absolutely electric. Yeah, so you have to show some love to the KC and KU women's teams who are both in the women's NIT tourney right now. We'll start in Manhattan. It was actually a rivalry matchup right off the bat, hosting Wichita State. And it was a blowout for the Wildcats. The 34-point difference is the largest in K-State women's postseason history. 90 points is the highest mark in postseason history. A great way to get into the postseason after missing the tournament in a year with a lot of excitement going in for this team. And 90 points for the offense, but no one person carried that load. Let me see if I can finish this all in one breath. Here I go. Serena Sundell, 16 points, 7 assists. Riley Glenn, 15 points. Jalen Glenn, 13 points and 11 rebounds. Gabby Gregory had 13 points and six other cats record a bucket. Riley Glenn sums up how the team came together for this one. We were super motivated coming in. We knew what we had to do. And I think it just helped that everyone was on the same page. Everyone was plugging in their spots. Everyone ran the floor and was ready to, you know, attack the basket. But I also think, like, Throughout the game, we had a good balance between like attacking the basket and shooting open threes. Whereas like Coach Mitty tells us all the time that sometimes we maybe favor the three a little bit more, but I think we had a good balance today and I think that's why we were successful. Next up for the Wildcats is a matchup with Wyoming at home on Tuesday in the round of 32. Coach Mitty calling for Manhattan to come root on his team. 
win that, and it's a game between the winner of Washington and New Mexico, a full 64 team field in the women's NIT, so plenty to still go. And that's not all KU women's basketball in the NIT as well. The Jayhawks hosted the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, and it was another big win, not nearly as much as K-State, but the Jayhawks outscored Western Kentucky by 15 in the third quarter and route to a 14-point win. KU more stars studded in its win, 21 points and 15 rebounds for star center Tayana Jackson, which is just a normal night for her. Yeah. 13 points and 13 rebounds for Chandler Prater, a 20-piece for Zakaya Franklin with seven assists and six boards and of course 14 for Holly Kurgister and 11 for Yvette Mayberry. Win is a great bounce back after a disappointing first round loss to TCU in the Big 12 tournament. Yeah. Now it gets really real for KU fans. Wichita State versus K-State was fun but the Jayhawks will now play host to none other than the Missouri Tigers on Monday. That's tomorrow. Jayhawks won in Columbus against an immense matchup earlier this season. Now the women get a shot at the renewed rivalry. We're really excited to be able to host uh, that game on Monday night at 630. Um, we we hope it's a, a game that really energizes our fan base. Um, we've not played Missouri since I think 2012 as a women's basketball program. Um, so these players have never participated in the, in the rivalry. It'll be important for us to educate one another on the importance of it and what it means. That game will be in Columbia, Missouri. A win against Mizzou would mean another possible rivalry matchup. Winner gets the winner of Northern Iowa and Nebraska. Laney, the 90s called. <laughs> it wants its conference back. Yeah. Old foes, same game. Should be a fun one in Allen Fieldhouse tomorrow. And it's so nice that they've positioned themselves in the WNIT tournament where mm -hmm. they've been able to host these games. Of course. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's always fun for the women's or excuse me, for the NIT where they got that game where they're playing in front of those home fans more so. Mm -hmm. It's fun mostly for the fans because you get playoff games right there. Mm -hmm, most definitely. We'll stick around after the break. We talked to one of our favorite people, Shreyas Lotto with the Kansas City Star, joins the show to talk about that KU game yesterday. That's after the break. Jefferson's is the perfect spot to watch the game. Come try our new loaded Max, or pull up a seat at the bar and match our cold draft beer with our new Mac Burger. Find us at 29th and Wanamaker in Topeka or online at jeffersons.com. Are you a super fan? K-State Superstore has the largest assortment of licensed K-State apparel and souvenirs waiting for you. And with our super fan rewards program, you'll enjoy even more. Fans can experience K-State Superstore at the stadium, online 24-7 at kstatesuperstore.com and our new flagship location at 520 McCall Road. K-State Superstore, official retail partner of K-State Athletics. Hear that? It's edge of your seat. He blows the body off the car. Entertainment at top speed. Camping World NHRA races, where top drivers compete to be the best. But don't blink. And who's got the horsepower? It is going to be Justin Ashley. A dazzling top fuel final. You could miss it. It's the Menards NHRA Nationals presented by Pet Armor. August 11th through 13th at Heartland Motorsports Park in Topeka. Every ticket's a pit pass and kids 12 and under are free. Get tickets early and save at NHRA.com. Meaningful relationships built upon trust is a founding principle of the trust company. We help individuals and businesses create tailored financial plans and diversified investment strategies that adapt over time to your unique needs. Because we are independent, we can offer flexibility and creativity that many advisors and trust departments can't. If you aren't sure where to start or you're looking to make a fresh start, contact us today for a free consultation. Jefferson's is the perfect spot to watch the game. Come try our new loaded Max, or pull up a seat at the bar and match our cold draft beer with our new Mac Burger. Find us at 29th and Wanamaker in Topeka or online at jeffersons.com. Welcome back to K Nation. It was a sad day for Kansas Hoops yesterday, but not all bad for Lainey because she got to hang, hang out with some of the team and with other media. Yeah, the media people are always fun to hang out with. One of our favorite guests here on K Nation, Shreyas Lada, is with the KC Star. He was kind enough to just break down what went wrong for the Jayhawks with me last night. Here's that interview. Okay, Shreyas, obviously KU 
not moving on anymore. Yeah. Just what did you see in the second half really to where Arkansas was able to take over? I mean, KJ Adams had that diamond stretch where he was out of the game with foul trouble. And he has put in Sylvia Tucker, who's averaged five minutes a game, and Zach Clements, who's played seven minutes since January. And it was kind of a disaster on that end. I mean, you know, they had a 10 point lead. They blew it up. Uh, Arkansas blew it up in about four minutes. And uh, you watch that, and you kind of see them attacking the rim, consistently going on players. So they're going after uh, the other guys because they realize, hey, they don't have a guy like KJ who plays, does a great job rim protecting. And even uh, Ernest Uday had four fouls, so he got out of the 16 minute mark and he didn't go back into the eight minute mark. So it was just kind of a, a disaster sequence where, you know, obviously all that compounded. And then by the time KJ came in, it was a tight game and you could feel Kansas really play tightly. You know, they were missing free throws, they were making some mistakes you don't see them necessarily make. And they just didn't look like a team that has been as disciplined and as great in the clutch as they've had all season late in the clutch. I don't know if that's the lack of Bill Self thing or if that's just, you know, they were tired or what, but there were some mistakes that you look there and you you think that's not a team that looked that good, you know, compared to how they were two, three weeks ago when they were winning the Big 12 championship and they were in the final against Texas. Yeah, and KU has been in foul trouble before a lot and it's mm -hmm. plagued them in games a lot before, but what was just different about it this time to where it actually put them on the wrong side of the final score? Yeah, I mean, Arkansas has these athletes on this team that can go out there and really get a bucket whenever they want at the rim. Um, and when you have a guy like Zuby and Clemens who haven't really played a ton this season and you tell them go play in the most important game of the season, it's always a tough proposition for both teams. I mean, uh, it's easy for Arkansas in the sense that you know you can go out there and attack those guys and they have to play without getting fouled, you know, fouling. So, you know, if they're giving them opportunities to go and get easy buckets and uh, you, know, you clearly see the inexperience on that side of things uh, and just shows, you know, KU's already playing undersized. Then you throw in guys who haven't played a ton and it's just a compounding factor overall. So you look at the box scores and they, these are very even teams, very even stats. Obviously missing KJ for a lot of it sucks. What else do you think that KU could have done differently to come out on the side of it? Definitely rebounding. I know we've talked about it all year. It feels like if Kansas is rebounding the ball well, they usually win, or if they, at least it's not like when they're down 10, I guess, rebounding-wise. If they're not rebounding the ball well, they usually lose. And they kind of came back in this game. They got rebounded by seven, but the offensive rebounding margin was eight, 15 to seven. And more importantly, Arkansas had 15 second chance points compared to KU's two. Yeah. I mean, you look at that, and that's 13 extra points opportunities there. The game is a one point game. Yeah. And that's that lead just yeah, gone. Yeah. Just evaporated. And, uh, you know, it, those are the things that really stood out to me on the box score. I mean, I think both teams didn't shoot the ball well, three point wise. Uh, KU's defense altered a little bit in the second half after being really good in the first half. Um, but I think rebounding was probably, you know, the thing that can tell you what happened in this game besides the shooting. Mm -hmm. And do you think it was difficult for KU to go from playing a team like Howard, where they shoot a lot of threes, they have to guard the perimeter a lot, to them playing a team like Arkansas, who's the opposite and gets all of their shots inside and doesn't shoot a lot of threes? I definitely think so. I mean, it was interesting because they've struggled against a team like this. I mean, everyone calls them TCU light or TCU kind of 2.0, and I, I kind of agree with that sentiment. It's like we're very similar teams, and, uh, you know, they have even better athletes than TCU does, and you can see how good they are. I mean, the youth, the inexperience that Arkansas has, they have two guys that are probably going to pick maybe a lottery next year, and they're freshmen. Uh, and they're the perfect tournament team because it's one of those things where, like, talent fails up all. And I'd say Arkansas probably has more talent on that roster than even KU does. All right, Charlie, thank you so much, and great coverage this season. Thank you for having me. All right, what a good interview there from Shreyas. I thank him again for his time. It was a very late night yesterday. Of course. <laughs> we'll stick around coming up after the break. Mr. Personality, K-State has a few, K-State has a few of those, but you know, Coach Dream Dowling is here and he joins Glenn Kinley. We'll have that after a short break. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. We turn intelligence into tactical success. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. You waiting on the text? Nah, got a little bet in. Oh, uh, that's why you sweat. I never sweat. You ever seen me sweat? You, you want me to get you one of them tiny little fans? No, I don't want one of them tiny little fans. Can we get some little fans on the stage for Mr. Rose, please? I don't want tiny fans. Can we have some cold towels on stage? I want the underdog to cover the spread. You sure? <laughs> yes! Yo. Oh, oh, you? Oh, we're gonna need wardrobe. Oh.
sports. We have everything that you're looking for at Play Against Sports. sports. New and used sports and fitness equipment with used up to 50% off retail. You can create your own discount by trading in and trading up. Sell us your gear and get cash on the spot or even get store credit. Play It Again Sports has something for every athlete, all seasons, all sports, on any budget. We're open every day in the Fairlawn Plaza Mall. Game, Game on! T-Mobile covers 99% of people in America. So when we say we have your town covered, we mean it. Where I live is a rural area, and the coverage has been awesome. And great coverage is just the beginning. Families and small businesses can save up to 900 bucks versus Verizon. The savings we get allows us to do more things as a family. We're a one-income military family. Saving every month really does help us. Plus, with our T-Mobile price lock, we guarantee we won't raise the price of your rate plan. Switch today. When your door is always open, so is the fridge. At Dylan's, however you shop, in-store, pickup, or delivery, you get the same great prices, deals, and rewards. That's a win-win-win. Dylan's, fresh for everyone. Welcome back to K-Nation. From the top down, K-State men's basketball's roster is filled with characters, to say the least. Whether that be Jerome Tang jumping on tables or David Gasson trying to teach his teammates the Dutch language. Yeah, but one guy might take the cake when it comes to personality on this team. Assistant coach Dream Dowling has been hyperactive on social media after getting to Manhattan, giving us an inside look at Wildcat basketball that we haven't really seen before around here. K-Nation's Glenn Kinley grabbed an exclusive with Coach Dowling on Saturday ahead of k State's matchup with Kentucky. Hello from Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm joined with K-State assistant men's basketball coach Jareem Dowling. Coach, thanks for your time. How are we enjoying March Madness so far? Uh, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. i um, happy to be here, blessed to be here with this awesome group and, uh, of course, Coach Tang's leadership. Mm -hmm. what, what do you feel like your role is with this team? Obviously, you do a lot of different stuff, but I understand that you're big in making sure the culture is right and making sure the vibes are always good, right? I'm just making sure everybody's energy is right, making sure that um, the mental is right, you know, mental uh, health is important to me and Coach Tang knows that, so I like to make sure that everybody's aware of how everybody's feeling off the court and I think once that's good, everything else will fall into place. Mm -hmm. I know you guys like to have a lot of fun with it. It's not, all, it's not all serious, it's not all business. How important do you think that is to keep things loose and make sure that you're enjoying the, the ride, right? Yeah, you gotta enjoy it. You know, one thing about Coach Tang, he preaches to us every day is to enjoy what we're doing, embrace it, don't try to like downplay it, live it up, experience it, you know, to the best of your ability. And we do a really, really good job in doing that. Mm -hmm. And we ask the players about Coach Tang all the time. We talk with Coach Tang regularly. We don't usually ask the other coaches about him. So <laughs> tell me about your relationship with Coach Tang, what that guy means to you, and maybe what you've learned from him. Man, I, I love him. Um, I love his family. I love what he's about. Uh, he, he's a mentor to me. He's a big brother to me. He married me and my wife in our, in our living room. Um, he, he means a lot to me, he means the world, you know, and it has nothing to do with basketball. It just has to do with how he lives his life and how he loves people and how he leads with God. What did you learn in your experience leading up to your time with Kansas State? You've coached a lot, you've coached internationally, you've coached at a couple different colleges here in the United States. What did you learn coming in? I, I've worked for great head coaches, man. I worked for great head coaches like Bill Lewitt at junior college, Kevin Reynolds at um, my Division II stop. Uh, Doc Sadler at Southern Miss and uh, Grant McCaslin recently at um, North Texas now. I've learned from some really, really phenomenal coaches just how to coach basketball, how to love people, and just the X's and O's of the game. And, you know, it prepared me for this opportunity to work with Coach Tang. What's been your favorite part about year one with the Wildcats? Fan base. The fan base is unbelievable. I I'll be honest. I, I went from having um, 2,000 followers to now having 11,000. And it's all because of K-State Nation and how much they care about their brand. And it's, it's an amazing feeling. we got to get these folks to tune into the Instagram Lives, right? <laughs> we always got the Instagram yeah. Lives, right? Oh, you always got to have the Instagram Live. I think I got you guys on there, yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, because sometimes they don't get to see that part. Mm -hmm. And I know they see snippets, and I want to show them as much as possible mm -hmm. to show them what their team is, what they're doing behind the scenes. And I think it's important because it allows them to care more. You know? Yeah. Anything else that our viewers need to know about you? Nah, nothing about me. It just K State is a brand. We we here to stay and um, Coach Tang is a great leader and you know these kids are unbelievable and continue to support them. Coach, thanks for your time, man. No Appreciate problem, it. man. Thanks. Thank Great interview as always. But you know what's also great, Lainey? Huh. With K State's win against Kentucky, there is now and now moving on to the sweet sixteen, there is a one in sixteen chance 
that Glenn Kinley will have to jump into the Chicago River. Hopefully it's still green when he has to do it. I doubt that, but he is on the record. It was about a week or so ago. He did say on, 20, on uh, 27 News that if <laughs> KU or K-State wins the national championship, that he will jump into the Chicago River. It's on, it's on my Twitter. It's on. It's out there. So we got to hold. We got to hold him to that. And now it's on K Nation too. So that is three places where people know that Glenn will jump into the Chicago River. If Get your State floaties ready, this. Glenn. <laughs> right. Got some work to do yet, though. We'll stick around. There's more K Nation coming up after the break. Car wrecks don't just happen from nine to five. If you're in a wreck, we're available 24 seven. Don't wait until tomorrow to get the help you need now. In a wreck, need a check? Patterson Legal is the way to go. Call 431 -0 -0 -0 -0. Hi, this is Voice of the Wildcats, Wyatt Thompson. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide or experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, 988 provides direct connection to free, confidential, and compassionate support. When you call, text, or chat 988, you will be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and connect you to additional resources if needed. For 24-7 non-judgmental support, just call, text, or chat 988. Doughboy's Pizzeria, now with two locations in Topeka. Serving fresh pizza with our signature sauce, award-winning wings, awesome appetizers, and desserts. With outdoor dining and entertainment, call or order online at doughboys.pizza. We have a new Holton location next to the hospital, and we're ready to celebrate. Our grand opening is March 20th through 30th. You'll see Dr. Brian, free ear health check, door prizes, and a $500 off coupon. Call for a reservation. Hi, Clay Sherwood, Swims and Sweeps. I'm here with Frank and Dean, the CEOs of Q, and we're here to show you our wall of fire. We have Hearthstone wood-burning stoves and fireplaces. Frank and Dean just can't get enough of the Hearthstone stoves. We have electric fireplaces, a variety of gas-burning fireplaces, both vented and non-vented. We also clean chimneys. So let Swims and Sweeps keep you warm this winter. Car wrecks don't just happen from nine to five. If you're in a wreck, we're available 24 seven. Don't wait until tomorrow to get the help you need now. In a wreck, need a check? Patterson Legal is the way to go. Call 431-0000. Is there a handshake cue? Well, <laughs> we just made one. Okay, I didn't like it. <laughs> we'll, we'll work in progress. Yeah. We'll take a quick look at the title odds the rest of the way. Kansas, of course, out, but odds makers still not a lot of respect on the Cats. Yeah, maybe don't put your money on KU right now. Houston's leading the odds at plus 380. Texas leads Big 12 at plus 1,000. Then K-State is at plus 2,500. That's 10 bucks to win 250 on the Wildcats to win the title. And, of course, there's always a little side bet with you jumping into the Chicago River. Of course, we might have. Not me. Don't say me. It's Glenn. That's right. I'm not jumping in that. What will you do if K-State won? I will hold the camera for Glenn when he's jumping in the Chicago River. Okay, that's not as bad, but close <laughs> enough. Plus 2,500, Glenn in the Chicago River. <laughs> if K-State wins, I will post it on Twitter for you guys. How about that? I think that's a good deal. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'll just I'll celebrate with them. That works too. Awesome, I love it. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching, K-Nation. Make plans to join us next Sunday and every Sunday from now on after our 10 p.m. newscast. Have a great night, and we'll see you next week. I mean, I was just in attack mode second half uh, because I seen how they were playing me. They were playing me for the pass uh, because I dropped a lot of dimes in the first half. So I just figured that, you know, I tried to look for my own shot um, a little bit more and be more aggressive. And I wanted to go to New York. So. <laughs>